uh, fluctuations of the free energy of spherical of the sphe spherical Sherrington Kirkpatrick model. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, thank. Uh, for I, I, do, I would like to thank the organizers first um, um, for inviting me here. It's really a um, nice environment and with lots of people. Okay. Um, right. So before I start, let me start with an advertisement. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was told that I should be standing here for the video purpose. I already forgot at the very start of it. Okay, so um, so uh, we're having a summer school here, but uh, we'll have a, a summer school at, in Ann Arbor, Michigan um, uh, next year. Uh, we had a similar summer school in last year, uh, two weeks program with four speakers. Um, we'll, and then we got a, a very positive uh, responses from students, and uh, I saw that many of them here and uh, they are collaborating each other or having uh, made some good friendship there. So uh, we decided to do one more time. Um, so here it is. And then Ivan and uh, Iona will be there and uh, also Andy Knowles and then Sasha Sotin as well. Okay. So, uh, so I know that this is not graduate students are not, not here. They are in the problem session, most of them. But uh, there are uh, <laughs> advisors and let's just let them know that uh, uh, this uh, event is going, going to happen. All right. Um, all right, so about the talk. So this is a joint work with um, Jiun Lee, who is in, in KAIST. Uh, it's based on the following two papers, which we, we wrote together the um, uh, last two years. So the subject is, um, so uh, let's think about the random matrix, the large Steigen value. Um, so you hear the large Steigen value here. Um, so by the minimax principle, this is the uh, maximum of, of this quadratic uh, form, where the x is a vector. Uh, n-dimensional vector uh, uh, with, with norm one. Okay, so then uh, on natural, cat and then we know that lots of things about this lambda one for symmetric matrix M. Okay, for the Wigner, real Wigner matrix, we know that this lambda one converges to some number and it fluctuates like a uh, trace victim distribution. The question that uh, we asked ourselves was that, uh, okay, so this looks like a max, and how about you replace the max by uh, the finite temperature version of it, and what would that going to happen? Okay, so here's a, a finite temperature version of that, you can imagine. So instead of max, you introduce bed up uh, there. So instead of maximum over the unit sphere, you integrate over unit sphere, over e to the bed of the same sort of, of, of Hamiltonian. And uh, because the e to this, so something, so take a look and maybe divide by beta. Okay, so this is what one may call is a finite temperature version of it, because if you take beta to infinity, beta is inverse temperature, take beta to infinity, then e to the max of this ob object will be the hope maybe the, the main, main contribution. Taking log of that will give, give you basically this object. Okay, so this is a finite temperature version of that, and a well, natural question would be what's the limit and what's the uh, fluctuations and so on, so on, so on. Okay, and uh, we didn't know, so we also, uh, we, we did not know the, the, the spin glass at all at the time, and we started doing some, this uh, project, and then uh, later we just learned that well, this is exactly what is called the uh, spherical spin, uh, spin glass, spherical uh, Sherrington's uh, Kirkpatrick model, SSK model in, in spin glass. Um, okay, so let me uh, define what it is, and then I'll make a connection there. <coughs> okay, so, uh, so, so, um, so think about the random symmetric quadratic function on sphere. So here's sphere instead of uh, uh, norm one, I just say make it norm n, uh, root n. Um, and here's uh, j is some uh, uh, matrix, symmetric matrix here, j, i, j. And then uh, as a function of sigma, the vector sigma on the sphere, think about this quadratic function. Okay? If you make it j random, then this is going to be random quadratic uh, function. And um, let's make this a uh, uh, matrix j. So j is a random symmetric matrix, so we call them a uh, real regular matrix here, right? So make the, the, the uh, variance of that to be order one of n, so that the eigenvalues of, of j uh, in a finite interval, finite support. Follow the same circle law. Uh, in our normalization, it will be uh, from minus two to two when those, as a support. Okay, for example, so, okay, so this is a natural question, right? So if you have a random, some sphere, and then you have a quadratic function, if you take that quadratic function to be some kind of random, what can you say about this quadratic function? Okay, but that's exactly the, the uh, eigenvalue a uh, problem in, in, in the following sense, because uh, if you look at the critical values of, of H on the sphere, constraint on the sphere, if you take uh, 
derivative of this, this with respect to sigma i, and then put the uh, um, uh, Lagrange uh, multiplier there. That will be uh, that derivative is, is equal to lambda Lagrange multiplier times sigma i, which is exactly eigen value eigen vector problem. So meaning that the critical values of, of this quadratic function on sphere is exactly uh, the exactly eigen values of, of of j. Okay. Okay. So um, so two two so called two spin. So the other two will be the fact that there are sigma i times sigma j, so quadratic, so quadratic version. So two spin SSK model is defined as the following uh, random, random measure. So suppose you are given j, so fix your j, taken as random, but, but fix. Given that j, you put a, a measure on the sphere defined by this, this Gibbs, Gibbs measure. So e to the beta, the inverse temperature, times this Hamiltonian h, and divided by uh, uh, it's a partition function. So if you fix your j, this will be a certain measure. Then you are changing your j, right? Which is drawn randomly from your uh, choice of uh, um, symmetric matrices, and then your measure will be changing. Okay. So the, the behavior of your spins will be changing according to that. Okay, the distribution of the spins will be changing depending on how you choose your j. The question then would be that uh, average on the spin, or maybe average is on J, then how does the uh, spin behave, and so on and so on, those the, the subject called uh, spinless. And one of the uh, first objects one can think about is uh, free energy, which is log of, of the partition function, normalized 1 over n, n, n times beta. So uh, if I write it out, that's going to be uh, this integral. So it's log of this integral over uh, root 10 size sphere, e to the beta h over d omega, the, the surface integral. And the largest eigenvalue of matrix j there. Uh, so, so here, the, because we enter it over six sigma, this is a random variable depending on j, right? As j is your, your random variable. And this is some kind of random variable, okay? Instead of random measure. So the eigenvalue of random matrix j is a particular case of this one when beta is infinite. In other words, uh, the temperature is zero. So the largest eigenvalue can be thought as a zero temperature uh, of free energy. Okay? So then, then our question is, for the finite temperature, what can you say? Okay? And of course, uh, it is, uh, this area of this uh, uh, spherical uh, Sherrington Kirkpatrick model is, 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 has a huge history. Uh, we, we learned <laughs> that it's a huge history by itself, and it's a huge subject. Okay, and then the random matrix sits in somehow in a very special case there as a zero temperature case of quadratic function. Okay, so more generally, we can think about much more general framework. Instead of quadratic symmetric function, you can think about random symmetric monomial of degree p. Okay, that's called the p-spin SSK, uh, where the Hamiltonian is now here's like a, a j of i sub one to i sub p. Okay, so it's indexed by a p variable, p indices, and it's, it's a symmetric. So we can think of it like a random tensor, maybe. And instead of thinking about the monomials, we can think about the mixed uh, mixture of this one, the general polynomials, or maybe even more general analytic functions, and so on and so on. Okay, so you can think about kind of random function there on sphere. Okay, and of course you can start changing the sphere to other things. The the classical theory, uh, I mean, more uh, not the spherical SSK version, but something called the SK version, which is Sherrington Kirkpatrick, which is a more fundamental object in the field, is the case when instead of sphere, you look at the, uh, the vertices of hyper hypercube. When the, uh, the sigma here is not on the sphere, but rather um, uh, the min takes only plus and minus one. Okay. That will be very different because uh, in, the, in the, the previous case, uh, on the sphere, if you have eigenvector is one direction, then you can achieve that direction. But in the hypercube, if your eigenvector direction may not be in parallel to one of these coordinate vectors, then it's very different. Okay. So, in, so this whole area is, is, is basically you have a random function on some kind of manifold or graph, and can you say anything about those things, right? So that's the whole entire big uh, area. And it, it started from uh, physics in the 1970s and has huge development there and also in mathematically. But uh, more recently, there are also applications in, in sci uh, computer science. But in this talk, uh, I, I cannot say anything about those in general. I'd only, in this talk, we'll be thinking about just one particular uh, thing, which is uh, 
limiting distribution of the free energy of just two spin SSK. Okay? And I, I say this from the, uh, the, uh, 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 from the uh, very first moment here, that the two spin SSK model is, is, is simplest among all these. So there's a, a spherical version versus this hypercube version, and also a general polynomial version versus a quadratic function version. And this two spin SSK is sort of simplest, and it actually behaves quite differently from, from other, other models. In the, one of the examples is that, for example, if you look at the number of critical points, because in the quadratic case and sphere case, uh, then the eigenvalues, so there are uh, two n uh, uh, critical points. But whereas, uh, if you have a PSP model with p greater equal to 3, then it, turn, it, it is known that the number of critical points are actually exponentially growing in n. Okay, so there is a, a huge difference there already. And for example, then how many critical points there are in a PSP model was greatly uh, studied, by, for example, by uh, uh, Tukao Finger and, and, and Gerard Benaros uh, a few years ago. Okay. Right. So, so we, so okay. So, what I'm going to talk in this, in here is, is only for two spin SSK, and the results main is not going to be extendable to other cases, and this is a very isolated case. That's what I want to say. So, and then the other cases does not have, does not seem to have a random matrix uh, distributions coming in that area. Okay, so that's I want to, uh, you will see that. Yes. Yeah, so if I start talking about the results. Okay. So, so, so before I talk about the uh, limiting distributions, let's talk about the uh, uh, low large numbers first. So the, the, the first order limit of the uh, free energy. Okay, so uh, this is known, this is a, 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 a well established uh, um, uh, subject in the uh, general, uh, either SK or SSK in, in full generality. So here the SS, SK version, this is the spherical version of that. So what is known as a Paris' formula, which is famous formula in 1980, is that um, this Fn, as n tends to infinity, converges. Okay, it converges, and he gave, gave out some formula of, of this F. The formula is, is very complicated. One has solved some variational problem uh, for a measure, and they have to stick that in. And, but that solving the variational problem is not, it's quite, not, quite not explicit, and uh, there has been extensive study of solving that variational problem, and for example, what is the support of the, the, the variational problem, and is there any absolute continuous part, or any uh, direct masses, and so on, so on. Uh, but this is a physical uh, uh, work using uh, broken symmetry uh, replica method. Um, that one, proving that took uh, quite a long time, and that was challenging in this area, uh, but it's done by Aguera in some degree to some degree, and it was definitely solved by Talagrand in his famous work in 2000. Six and the first uh, generalized by Panchenko, but there are uh, many other works in that direction. And then these work, these work for uh, Gaussian uh, uh, J, uh, but the Gaussian is, can be dropped, but they are universally disproven by, uh, uh, by by these people. Okay, so, so this was for the, uh, the the SK model, which is more difficult to one. Uh, the easier version SSK, which was introduced a little bit, la little bit later than an SK model, as a sort of simplification of, 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 of SK. Uh, for that, uh, the, the usual contribution is uh, Crisanti and Somers, which, who, who gave a uh, Paris formula version for the SSK. Um, but in or a particular case was, was already studied by Kostelitz and, and Thorlis and, and Jones in, in 1976. And I'm going to go back to that paper uh, later. Um, okay. So if you just focus on two spin SSK, which is the subject of our talk. Um, so that, the, I, I, I said that this, there is a form, uh, f limit f, okay? So, um, so limit f, if you think about the zero temperature case, which is random matrix case, then this f should be the largest eigen, limit of the largest eigenvalue. In our scale, it's going to be two, just numbers two. Okay, but if you put the general temperature, it'll be different. Uh, for the, Generally, the writing down this F explicitly is not so easy, but for two spin SSK, it's already done, and then one can solve that variation problem, which is not too difficult. And in particular, it is C2, but not C3, and there is a critical temperature. Okay, so the beta is uh, half, is uh, the critical temperature in this our scale. Uh, so a small beta, which is high temperature, 
it is also linear. Um, uh, when beta is bigger than half, it's, it's given by this form. And here, the as beta to infinity, the leading term is 2. That 2 is not a coincidence. That 2 is the edge of the uh, semicircle law, okay, as it should be. Okay. So that can be uh, obtained by a Panchenko and then Tolagrand. But uh, Alice Guion and Maida already has this result in slightly different version. And also Kosolich and then uh, Thaulis and Jones paper that I mentioned uh, has this formula, not rigorous, but uh, almost rigorous. All right, so that was the sort of the, the, the limit, f. And then what we're interested in is the fluctuations. Okay? So the, for the fluctuations, uh, um, before I walk, uh, these are the ones that were known, I think. So to spin SIK at zero temperature with, with beta equals infinity, that's random metric theory, so that we already know the result. Right? So, so that's the largest eigenvalue, and therefore, in our scale, the, it converges to 2, and it fluctuates as uh, 1 over n to the 2 third, right? That's the scaling of fluctuations. Now we all know well, and it converges to trace Udam G, uh, GOE trace Udam distribution. Okay, and it's proven by Tracy Widam and, 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 and Peter Forrest as well. And, uh, and Sochinikov uh, proved in, in lots of uh, Wigner matrices and further generalized now in, in full, uh, 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 in, in, in this huge university class that was um, um, developed over the many, many years. So this whole subject itself in random metric theory. Okay. For, uh, for general te temperature other than uh, zero, when beta is not infinity, and the, the famous result is, is, is by Eisenman, Leibovitz, and Ruel, uh, which says that for two spin case, uh, they did it for more difficult case of SK model, not the hypercube model. Uh, when beta is less than the critical number, so it's high temperature, so, so beta is, is, is very small, um, they showed that if free energy fluctuates like 1 over n, and the, uh, the limit is given by Gaussian. And the Gaussian has some uh, explicit covariance uh, um, uh, 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 sorry, variance here. And, and their work was uh, reproduced by several other people, uh, Florish and Jekalinski, and Komech and, and Nube gave a completely different proof and so on and so on. And um, this is two spin version. For P spin version, uh, there are uh, proofs uh, of, of this, this kind of theorem for high temperature as well, with different uh, fluctuations. So note that here the fluctuation is, is one over n. So if this was like a, a central limit theorem, classical central limit theorem scaling, it would be root n, but here's, here's n. Okay, so that's, you have to, you have to think about that. Um, so this is only for a high temperature, so there's a missing gap between beta from half and infinity, and also this is SK model. As SK model should be easier, so uh, probably the similar theorem should be, be provable, but uh, it seems like it's not written anywhere, but it should be, should be possible to do, I guess. Um, for general beta, um, uh, the, the, the result is, is, is obtained by uh, Chatterjee, uh, so uh, who's going to talk, I think, this afternoon. Um, he shows us something called the super concentration, which is that the variance of Fn, he have, have attained the explicit upper bound that uh, is bounded by one over n times log n. Okay, so that means that the fluctuations of Fn is uh, at most one over root n times log n. So basically smaller than one over root n, right? So it's smaller than the classical central limit theorem scale, and, 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 and these are consistent with that. Uh, but but much, much smaller than that. Okay? But, the, but, but, but he was able to do that for the difficult model of SK, not spherical version, but the hypercubic version, um, and also uh, uh, for all temperature, which is a very, uh, 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 very important contribution. Okay? All right. Okay, so, so here's our result, the number one result, um, so uh, with, 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 with Lee. Uh, the proof is actually very simple. <laughs> okay? Once you start how, how it's done, uh, it's just that um, the, the, the result is here. So we, we, we have two spin SSK. Uh, think about random symmetric matrix, real regular matrix, J. Uh, it's scaled such that it's uh, M over root 10, with M is order one Gaussian variables, uh, mean zero, variance one, and fourth moment three is not important, then some constants will be changing. And all the moments are finite just for the uh, so purpose of uh, uh, make things easier. So here we have results for all beta, other than the critical beta half. So for low temperature when beta is 
bigger than half, then we always see the trace UDM distribution, okay, all the way. Okay, but the only change is that the, uh, the variance changes by this explicit constant. Okay, on the other hand, when beta is smaller than half, then uh, this is same, basically same result as uh, this result here, the Eisenman and uh, Leibovitz real result. Uh, so it's, it's, it's the same thing. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that this can be provable from their technique. It's just that uh, uh, we could also get as well. But the, the key part here is that for all low temperature, away from the critical temperature, you always have this n to the minus two third fluctuations with the trace of them as its limiting distribution. Okay. All right. So, so this is for two spin. Uh, so uh, this was in uh, two, this will go, uh, two years ago. And uh, around that time, there are many other papers, several papers came up. And one of them is that uh, uh, by uh, Subak and Zaituni, um, they did uh, for P spin, uh, but uh, at zero temperature when beta is infinite. And uh, you can see that uh, that is very different from a two spin model. Okay? So for P equals two spin, the random metric from the random metric theory, we have trace UDAM and NT2 minus one minus two third fluctuations. But when P is bigger than or equal to three, at zero temperature, they show that the fluctuations is given by uh, one over N and with, with Gumball distribution. Okay? So Gumball distribution is that uh, it's, a, it's an extreme statistics of independent uh, random variables. So instead of having trash redown, which is, would be that the several top eigenvalues are correlated, but here somehow the several top, eigen, top critical points are kind of independent in, in this scale. Okay? And then, the, uh, then you, you get the maximum of them, and that therefore you got the Gumbel distribution. So it's, it's a it's completely different structure. Okay? And it is true for all, 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 all P. Uh, uh, but this is only for beta infinity, and then the, uh, extending that to uh, uh, finite temperature will be uh, an interesting uh, problem. Okay. So our result follows from uh, this result, uh, which will be uh, much more transparent, where this uh, uh, n to the 2 thirds and uh, the n fluctuations come, come from. <coughs> what we proved was that uh, for the low temperature, uh, we have this, this uh, uh, formula. So the free energy, which is a random variable, is approximated by uh, the its, its limit, the order one limit. And then the next term would be, upon this constant, uh, basically the large eigenvalue. Okay. Okay. So the, in, in, the, in, the, in the large and limit, the free energy is dominated by the, the only the large eigenvalue. Whereas for the high temperature case, upon extracting up uh, apart from this constant, uh, the free energy is, is dominated by all eigenvalues in the form of uh, the sum over a uh, function g evaluated by these uh, eigenvalues, where the function is given by this form explicit, explicitly. You have two beta plus one over two beta, that's bigger than two. So, so it's a log of some constant minus x, where, and then this g is, is analytic, uh, smooth, uh, in a domain interval, which includes this uh, support of the semicircle law. Okay. So, so here the upshot is that in the low temperature, the, the large eigen will dominate in this explicit way. Uh, and then the high temperature, the free energy is, is approximated, the fluctuation of the free energy is, is given by uh, the sum of, 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 of a function evaluated at uh, all of the eigenvalues. We don't have a result for beta critical. That is an yeah, interesting question to, 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 to think about. Sorry? Um, not much, but uh, I'll have one line at the end. Right. Okay, so, so of course, in here, lambda 1 is the largest eigenvalue, then we know the fluctuations, and uh, so this uh, n to the minus 2 third fluctuation with threshold and distribution. On the other hand, this one is uh, sum of functions evaluated at a lambda k. So that is what we call the linear statistics. Uh, we heard that already yesterday uh, in a Percy Diakonis talk. So the general result here is that for test function f, which is smooth on an open interval containing the support of the equilibrium measure, if you look at the sum of these uh, 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 random variables, evaluated function evaluated the eigenvalues, it's approximated by the semicircle approximation. But the error is given by Gaussian. And then here the scaling is that 
Uh, this is sum of n objects and, and, and uh, subtract to the mean. And then you do not divide by anything, right? In the central limit theorem, classical central limit theorem, you have to divide by root 10, but here we don't. Okay, so here the concentration is, is much stronger. So because all the eigenvalues are all correlated together in to some degree. So, so, uh, so uh, one of the it's been proven in, in, in many different uh, settings of random metrics and then uh, uh, extended several times. So Percy Di uh, mentioned this paper already, Diakonis Jashirani for the unitary uh, CUE case and uh, Kurt Johansson uh, in the uh, unitary ensemble case and then also a uh, real case as well. And then Bayern Silverstein and Bayern Yao also extended these, things, uh, these results in, in other uh, weak random random matrices and so on and so on. But there are many other uh, papers uh, in, 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 in this direction proving that the global statistics, global linear statistics, uh, does not uh, concentrate much uh, stronger than uh, uh, this classical central limit theorem, and it has much smaller fluctuations. Okay. And so if you plug this one in here, then that's how you get the uh, uh, Gaussian fluctuation, but different uh, scaling than the central limit theorem. All right. All right, so how do you then get these results? Okay, um, it's, it's, it's just very simple. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, you see, right? Um, so we use the, the results from the metric theory. Right. Okay. So, so Zn, which is the um, uh, partition function, uh, so free energy will be a log of this partition function. So it's a it's an integral of of the uh, the the Gibbs measure e to the beta sigma j sigma, the quadratic function now written as this uh, uh, inner product. Um, you can take this matrix J and you decompose as so you, you need uh, orthogonal part and diagonal part and orthogonal transpose, and then you take this orthogonal times part times sigma as your new variable, sigma tilde, and you to change your variable. And the good thing is that our, we are doing this over sphere, so changing the rotation of spin doesn't change the, the measure, right? So, so you can diagon so you can read that notation, this becomes now lambda, the diagonal part, and instead of sigma, I, sigma tilde, I scale it so that we have n outside, so beta n, xi squared and um, uh, on the unit circle. So this is an integral that, that we have to do. So already that the eigenvectors all disappeared, right? It's all depending on these eigenvalues. Now we want to compute this, okay? right? So let's th think about the following integral, qz. Z is a parameter here. So this part is essentially this one here. And then I take e to the minus z sigma summation of yi squared and uh, do the, uh, the n-dimensional integral in the whole Rn. And I compute this QZ in two different ways. One is that, well, this is Gaussian integral. So we can do the Gaussian integral, and it's here. Another way is that I'm going to use polar coordinate system to compute this. If I do the polar coordinate system, uh, so this sum here, okay, it's going to be R squared, but I scale change it to R by writing R squared to be R tilde. So this is going to be R, and the rest, uh, so R part is going to be zero to infinity. The rest there's a sphere part of the integral, and I dumped the, dumped them, dumped that part in this IR. So IR contains this sphere, sphere integral. Um, this is R to the n over two minus one comes from this Rn part, right, from Jacobian, going to polar. And then this part is here R comes up because of this y i squared was in R, but the x i is in the sphere, so there is a R part R coming out. And this IR is exactly uh, what we want to compute when we insert R is equal to beta n. So now QZ, which is now from this Gaussian integral, is equal to this integral of R uh, uh, over R of this function IR. And this is exactly the Laplace transform of IR. So if you recognize this as a, being a La Laplace transform, you can take inverse Laplace transform to get IR. So IR is obtained by taking inverse Laplace transform of this QZ, which is given by this Gaussian integral and then inserting this R to be equal to beta n. Okay, that's all you have to do. Uh, so therefore, you get this Zn equal to inverse Laplace transform. It's a single integral, right? So it's a, it's a single integral respect to this, uh, the Laplace variable Z of, of this one <coughs> times, uh, uh, times uh, some other factors that comes, comes in here. Okay, so that, okay. 
So the factor that comes in uh, comes from here. Um, all right. Yeah. So th yeah. Sorry. This is coming from the, the Laplace inverse Laplace uh, variable. Okay. So here the condition is that the the integration integral should be in the vertical direction, uh, where it's uh, it's to the right of all the the singularities. So the 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 gamma, which is the uh, direct the uh, uh, vertical integral, should be to the right of all of the eigenvalues. Okay, that's the that's the technical condition, but it's a very important condition. Okay, so of course when we got this formula, well, we were sure that somebody has done this one before, <laughs> of course. And then uh, the Kostelitz and Thalys and Jones paper already had this formula, and uh, also in a similar version in the random matrix theory context. Uh, Man Yumo and, and Dong Wang, who is here, uh, also had a, obtained similar formula, and they analyzed used that in, in their random matrix cal calculations. All right. So, so this is the one that we have to compute. Okay. So the lambdas are so. What's so this? What's in here? So it's a sum integral involving uh, eigenvalues, right? So eigenvalues are random. So here's some kind of random numbers inserted in your integrand, and I want to compute the asymptotics of this single integral. Okay, okay so I, I wrote in this question here, in integral of e to the n over 2g, and g is 2 beta z. So temperature is in here. Beta is only there. It's the only place that beta appears. And sum of a log of z minus lambda k. The lambda k is here. Okay. So if you give me lambda k, I put, put this function here, and then take this integral, and that's my, my, my partition function. So well, so be, being, this being a single integral, now the natural thing to think about is, well, we want to compute, do it by using methods to be decent. But the twist here is that uh, the integra integrand is random, right? So it's a stupid decent um, analysis for random integral. Okay, that sounds a little bit scary, uh, but you remember that uh, your integrand is random, but however. We know that the eigenvalues are very rigid, right? So that's one of the important things about random metrics, right? The eigenvalues are very, very rigid. They are not like really, really moving around, right? And they are sort of almost locked in in their uh, classical locations that we expect them to be. When they move, they move like all together, right? So that's the, uh, the feature of the, the eigenvalues. And therefore, if they, since they are rigid, uh, we can, maybe we can replace this lambda case by its expected locations. And, they have, and, and also, the integral can be controlled uh, even though it's, it's, there's a little bit of randomness there. Okay, so the, the method specific sense uh, can be applied. That's the, that's the message here. So I mentioned this uh, rigidity now. That's, uh, I want to highlight that uh, explicit bound there that the people obtained. So it's, a, you know, in my opinion, one of the most important results in the random metric theory. So Odash and Yao and Yin in 2012 paper show that with high probability, uh, the random object is lambda k. So this is all of eigenvalues all together, right, 